Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody from Perm. The city of Perm in Russian language actually sounds as Perm or as uh, the locals saying Perm, Perm, Perm. Okay. All right. So I just say Perm. Okay. But in English manner, I think it's uh, like a Perm. Okay. Uh, my name is Sergey Baklikov. This is Baklikov Live, 27th of October 2023. And uh, today, early in the morning, just uh, one hour and 25 minutes ago, I landed in the international airport of Perm, okay? And immediately I came here to the square named after Vasily Tatishev. He was an engineer and uh, the uh, uh, geograph he was one of the founders of the city of perm when 300 years ago peter the great our emperor peter the great sent him here to research the land for the copper smelting works so he came here and he figured out that this territory and we are here not far from Kama River. We will yet now go there. He figured out that it's going to be the best place for that because here are the deposits of the iron ore, you know, copper ore. Um, there's uh, the Kama River, which is one of the biggest rivers of Russia. It's considered that Volga is the largest river, but many scientists uh, like argue about that and say it depends on how to look at it. Some are thinking that Kama is the largest. Anyway, what we know is uh, like Kama and Volga are the largest rivers. Okay. And look, here already seems uh, like used to be the snow, uh, a very decent amount of the snow. It, uh, it's not that much yet and uh, it's like already melting a little bit, but the snow is already here because you know where we are? We are in the pre-Urals region. You know, it's not St. Petersburg. It's not St. Petersburg, which is uh, also not the warmest city of Russia, but being on the Baltics, being next to the Baltics, uh, however, getting, however, getting a good portion of the warm Gulf Stream, okay, Tatishev, Vasily Nikitich Tatishev. So St. Petersburg getting a uh, good uh, amount of the flow, the Gulf Stream from Baltics. And that's why in St. Petersburg, actually most of time, most of time, the weather in the winter, in average, like from minus one to plus one degrees Celsius. Okay, today somebody again playing with my channel. Yes, before I have started uh, this live stream, there already was 2,100 likes, and now there is uh, 2,800 views. And Swelling Sausage sending the super chats. Damn, is that you, man? Nice to see another massive stream of firm wall. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Bianegust Jonsson, Sabrina Fair, Bridge and Tunnel Scooter Club. I say hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me, for joining me today. So, the road trips keep going and now in uh, a winter format there's many reasons why in a winter format i'm not just uh, jumping in my car and uh, driving through the whole russia like from town to town from place to place but uh, mostly uh, just on the weekends like not even on weekends but on a friday I'm uh, jumping into the plane and coming to different cities of Russia. And so now it's, uh, it's firm. I came here not by car, I came here by the airplane. Uh, 
I use at first I use I use coming to the cities in the Saturday and the Saturday mornings. But then I figured out that uh, Friday is uh, a better option because look, on on Friday you're coming and uh, you can see still the working day routine because Friday is the day when people are still working, right? And so uh, here we can see like a morning routine. We really can see like many cars, many people rushing somewhere, mostly just uh, at work. And uh, in the uh, evening, we already can see how people uh, starting their weekends and so how people are hanging out, okay? And when I was coming on Saturday, yeah, like, of course, Saturday night was great, but morning stream looked like I'm walking in the ghost city. Ghost city and people were asking me, where are the people? Where are the people? Okay, yeah. Mostly I was missing the street cleaners, the municipal workers, or maybe just some sportsmen who were making a morning run. Yeah, especially, especially in the winter time, not much people in the streets on Saturday morning. But now it's a lot of people here because you want it or not. But if you have a job, you are going for a job. Hello, Silvana Hori. Hello, Shani Vaskis, Nina G. So, what's this? Okay, this is the Art College. Art College, the Ministry of Culture of Term Region. And this looks like... Uh, pre-revolutionary gymnasium, such a typical the end of 19th, beginning of 20th century building. Yeah, this is how typically the colleges or the schools or gymnasiums or lithiums looked like in the beginning of 20th century. Hello, Vladimir Akhramiev. Hello, Natalia Akhramiev. Draghi Sokol, Carlos, No Way Jose, Badon. Hi, P. Witt. So now, first of all, I gotta go to the place where used to be the copper smelting plant. And then we will walk just all around the city center. I am now in two hours flight from St. Petersburg. Yes, the flight taken exactly two hours, no more, no less. And uh, the distance between Perm and St. Petersburg is even like uh, less than from uh, St. Petersburg to Ufa. Uh, two hours and uh, the distance between St. Petersburg and Perm, if uh, we will take the straight direction, because we were flying by the airplane. It's uh, 15, 100 kilometers. Last trailer, so Sergey, you're giving a no fake and no bullshit report. Yes, of course, no, no fake, no bullshit, because just my concept is all no fake, no bullshit, because you see, I'm just, I just, look, I just came to the city the city of Perm, I just got to the airport, I got a taxi, I came here, and look, uh, it's interesting that I thought, I thought I will come like 15 minutes before the stream, and I will be able to buy some coffee, but damn it, here in Perm, seems like everything is closed until 8. It's like easy to find something in Moscow or St. Petersburg, especially in the center, in the historic city center, but in Perm, only everything since eight. And I never even uh, was drinking the coffee. If I knew that, 
I would buy coffee just in the airports. Even though in airports usually it's uh, like twice more expensive. And look, now I just uh, taken off the camera from my coat, from my jacket, and uh, placed my phone on the uh, steady cam. And that's it. Here I am, real time. No cuts, no fake, no bullshit. Mima Flowers, Carlos, Alexander A. Hi. Swelling sausage before you shot a massive stream of perm. You need plenty of rest and to be excited about what you're doing. Hopefully you slept well. Thanks. In fact, I was not sleeping yet because uh, my flight uh, uh, St. Petersburg time started at 2.35 and I was not really sleeping at night, but I will get a sleep after I will finish this live stream and then yet we'll come back to you here in Perm, uh, from, from Perm, uh, in the evening. Yes, the Trans-Siberian Highway runs through Perm. Uh, exactly, exactly. This is why Perm turned to be a uh, very strategically important city in the years of World War II. Uh, you know, uh, the, the city started to be developed as a copper smelting plant, right? This is what I told you. This is what I told you, right? Uh, but then it started to be developed not only as the uh, copper melt smelting plant, smelting plant, but uh, another industry started to be developed here. So it's going to be kind of industrial and technological city. Uh, the Catherine the Great in 1780s uh, got, uh, gave the status of the city to Perm and decided to be developed as a so-called governor's city. You know, there was two kinds of cities or towns in the Russian Empire, the governors and the like provincial. And uh, having a status of governors, uh, city was giving a bigger budget and yet in the end of 19th century the famous Trans-Siberian Railway went through Perm and that's where we go now the main, the main railway station the main railway station of Perm historically uh, of course right next to the historic building of uh, I mean the historic territory of uh, the copper smelting works Back. Uh, here's by the way this is the very first the very first cathedral in Perm it's Peter and Paul Cathedral just like in St. Petersburg uh, so look Kama River one of the largest rivers of Russia a lot of industries, so it only had an industry potential. The railway, a part of Trans-Siberian Railway, okay? Next thing, uh, well, if you talk about the World War II being far in almost the Urals, we are in the pre-Urals. We are not far from the Western, uh, how to say, like a Western, western parts of the Ural Mountains. This is something what uh, influenced the fact that it was considered as uh, a uh, great city, great place for moving the industries to Perm. Well, not only to Perm, of course, like to Chelyabinsk, to Yekaterinburg, to Ufa, but in Perm too, for the uh, production of the stuff needed for the war in the years of the Second World War. And all those uh, enterprises which used to produce just uh, regular stuff started to produce the ammunition and other stuff. So Perm played a good role in World War II because being far from the front lines, uh, 
the enterprises were evacuated here from other cities local uh, enterprises were readapted for the needs of the war and that's it then you know how it works it worked the way that the soviet union defeated the nazis johnny Daly, thank you so much so uh 2022 turned to be the year when russia hit the all-time records of the construction of the new east state no matter to all the sanctions no matter what okay and really no matter where i go we see the constructions everywhere huge constructions LNR News, does firm still produce military equipment? I think so, I think so. You know, uh, back in the Soviet days, back in the Soviet days, there was even the time when Perm was a closed city. It was not impossible to get inside of the city if you are not living or working here. And of course, many military productions are still here. 300 years of Perm. Yes, this year Perm celebrated 300 years. And this is, you see, the territory and those historic buildings of the original copper smelting works. I now will go down the river, Kama River. This is uh, one of the biggest slogans of Perm. Happiness is not behind the mountains. The philosophy in Kono, I'm amazed by the massive 3.1k stream. No, here is a lot of boats now. You know, I have some trolls who are from time to time playing with uh, like my channel like sending the bots to me for uh, views and for likes okay Zavod Spagina Spagen plant so we're now on the uh, uh, his sto uh, uh, in the in the very heart in the very heart of Perm actually. As you can see, this is still the industrial part, still industrial uh, industrial part. And that, that is the Perm railway station. And here now on the territory of the railway terminal, they have the museum, my Russia, my history. Lana, hello. Lana is asking if it's cold. Well, it's now minus three degrees Celsius. It's relatively, not that cold, relatively, okay? I mean, now it's already like almost the winter time. And for a winter time, minus three, it's like almost nothing. Anyway, I got a nice warm jacket and that's it. Look at my new jacket. It's pretty warm, you know. I never told you yet that Perm is the 15th largest city 
of Russia, 15th, with a population of 1,027,000 residents. In order to understand that being 15th largest city of Russia, it's uh, pretty decent because let me tell you that in total in Russia, here is 1,150 cities and towns. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, look at this. Now you can see a truly historic part of uh, Perm. Tatishev, Vasily Tatishev, the engineer, when he came here, he uh, realized through the methods of uh, the scientific research that this place approach all the needs for the foundation of uh, the copper smelting works here is the iron ore deposits here is the river back then of course here was not the uh, railways yet because the railways came here in the end of 19th century this is a part of the trans-siberian railway but here was the river Kama River. And let me tell you that Kama River having the connection with five seas. Caspian Sea, White Sea, Black Sea, Azov Sea, and Baltic Sea. Okay? So, uh, Kama is as big as uh, you have the connection with five different seas so it's like in the north in the north uh, west in the north east and in the south like uh, the black sea in the south azov sea in the south baltics in the north white sea in the north The facades, the facades of the railway terminal. Hello, P. Gansido. Hi to Panama. Hi, G at Sable 19. So this is an old Perm railway station. And here we are. Kama, Kama River. One of the largest rivers of Russia. The famous sign, it says, Shastya Nizagarami, happiness is not behind the mountains. This is just a sign, I think it turned to be very popular after the Russian TV series called Realne Putsani, The Real Guys. The TV series Real Guys broadcasted on TNT channel here in Russia, a very popular federal channel. Mostly it's all about the sitcoms, you know, the humor, the comedies, like different shows, dance show, stand-up shows. 
And uh, when they have started their TV series, yet about 10 years ago, uh, that was in the right place and the right time. That was the time when people kind of got tired of uh, watching the TV series about, you know, the glamorous life and stuff like that. And uh, they wanted something, something simple. And that's tur tur turned to be uh, the TV series about the life of uh, just a simple guys, like the real guys, okay, uh, from not from Moscow or from St. Petersburg, but from Perm, which is, uh, however, being a big city, well, way more provincial than St. Petersburg or Moscow. And uh, that's it. So they, they hit they hit they hit a huge audience who got to love it there's the bridge which is connecting two banks of Kama river well on that bank of Kama river there are also a part of the city but this bank as far as i know this is the left bank considered to be a left bank it's uh, well the main part of the city is here just historically Margaret McIntosh, hello. And thank you for the super sticker. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you for supporting my channel. And uh, now the shout out with a special thanks to uh, the members of my channel because 100% of uh, the revenue from exactly uh, memberships uh, goes for the road trips around Russia. Already over 90 cities and towns was covered by me. And I continue traveling all around Russia, bringing you the stuff, updating you. Like, it's already nice to have uh, the places where, you know, we are coming back, like, already for the second, the third time. And we already can uh, uh, not only, like, remember, like, uh, recall, like, to recover in the memory, like, what it is all about, but yet we can... But yet we can see the updates, see the updates. Hello, Mark Morris. Hello, Nick Miller. I remember how when I was coming here in March, a huge works of the reconstruction of the embankment of Kama River used to go here but it seems like they probably finished most of works uh, to August because August was when they are celebrated 300 years August of this year, so two months ago uh, they are celebrated 300 years anniversary of the city of Perm because it's 2023 and Perm was founded in 1723 so you see, uh, just being here, just being here, you can see the reasons why Perm has the options to become one of the biggest cities of Russia. Kama River, one of the largest rivers of Russia. The railway, which is the part of Trans-Siberian Railway, Historically, they developed industries. And of course, uh, the land which is uh, rich with the natural resources. Ella, thank you for the super sticker. Hello to you and thank you. Hi, A. Victor. Hi, everybody who continue joining my amazing channel. My unbelievable channel. Yeah. Uh, I think that some works keep going here, but I remember how yet in March I was not even able to walk through the embankments. I remember I was walking through 
and uh, there I just talked into the fence but now it seems they are finishing finally finishing their works uh, yes in March we saw so many uh, reconstruction works that was going here uh, it was easy to say that the city prepared so much to the celebration of 300 years anniversary celebration Okay, now let's dive into the city itself. Let's leave this industrial part and we'll go to the city itself. While in St. Petersburg, there's still a lot of yellow leaves on the trees. Here, the trees are already almost naked. This birch tree is already naked. But you see how it happens. How all that seems dirty mess. After all turns in the nice squares and parks in Russia, now it's a boom of so-called public spaces when they are or reconstruct the old squares and parks or creating completely new ones. Mark Morris, money for kerosene for your empty lamps in your dark freezing apartment, Sergey. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. The Essentials Morris always sending super chats for the most essential things. Also, like the money for kerosene for uh, the airlines company, Smart Avia. They will take me back tomorrow to St. Petersburg. Today I was flying with a low coaster Smart Avia. Smart Avia. Uh, and uh, what's funny is that just two days ago there was an accident which has happens pretty uh, seldom in Russia. Exactly the uh, how it's a Smart Avia Airlines flight from St. Petersburg to Perm was finished with the airplane a road behind the landing lane okay I mean nothing serious about that nobody was even injured but it's always considered as uh, like an accident so the the airplane the airplane rolled behind behind the landing line one of the historic buildings here goes it's restoration now you know considering it is located next to the uh, copper smelting plant and next to the river I can say it was a big shot mentioned back in those days. Hello, Steven Mucha. Suburban train. Yes, a short suburban train.
So now I quickly, I quickly uh, checked on the, the Yandex maps. This is a former uh, house of Mash Mashkov. Mashkov. Uh, once I'm not that much into the history of Perm, I can't tell you for sure who exactly was Mashkov. But now, in this building is like it is the museum of the local history of Perm. Jeff Vincent, as I said, it's minus three degrees Celsius now. And it's considered as not too cold. Relatively not too cold. Relatively. Because in the Russian winters and uh, in particular here in Perm, the temperature can be as low as minus 30, minus 35 degrees Celsius. So minus three is like nothing, especially considering now I'm in my wonderful winter jacket. It is, however, allowed to keep my head uh, fresh, you know. No, Sophie, I don't know where you're from, but minus three is okay. In the winter time, it's considered warm. So, this is the monument to the heroic liberators of the Urals. That is dedicated to the revolution, not to the World War II. Here it's dedicated to the revolution. You know, I really wanted to come to Perm in the summertime. I wanted to come to Perm this summer, but somehow it has not worked out. But that will be the thing to do for the future. Hello, Jan Carries here. No, today I am attacked with the boats. With the bots. Okay. These are bots. From time to time, I'm attacked with the bots. Somebody's, somebody's sending just a useless bots. Useless likes. Not only it is not helping the channel or the live stream to go up, but it's probably vice versa. Affecting the channel negative because for YouTube, it's easy to recognize these are bots. Hello, Vinnie the Pooh. 
it's easy to say that so those are the boats because you see it's like so many people are watching but no almost no new names you remember when in july or was it june well i once had the real amount of viewers watching my channel because that was the time when the Wagner it was the, the days of the Wagner rebellion okay and uh, back then everybody wanted to find the live streams uh, from Russia like to see what happens and even though my live stream was not about that however people were finding me and uh, back then that day really like about four or five thousand people watched my live stream and we immediately saw so many new names Anonymous Hello Bobs Also, look at my latest video, uh, breakfast at Marcellis restaurant in St. Petersburg. There is now many comments with uh, just uh, smiles, different smiles uh, from the accounts with the names and the photographs, I mean avatars, which looks like these are the accounts that belongs to 12, 13 years old uh, kids. That's how I found you, Sergey. So happy I did, Sandra. Oh yes, you came from that stream. Yeah, it seems like you, Jan Nordbo, Jan Olaf Johansson, you guys all came from that stream. Oh, look, the prosecutor's office of Perm region and this historic building. And look, there's the uh, local state opera and ballet theater. This is the oldest theater in Perm. It is named after Pyotr Tchaikovsky. The sugar baking from the video sound is very yum. Oh yes, oh yes. Look, uh, that was unusual. It uh, from once, well, it looked like just a, a typical grilled bacon. But it had like a sweet taste. I asked what it is, why? And they said it's like absorbed in sugar, which is melted and left that. Uh, sugary flavor the renovation of the opera and ballet theater keep going I remember they were working on that yet in March and it keep going And that's the theater square. Hello, VLDOSTR. VLD Asutr. Katusha found me just today. All right. Welcome. Welcome to the club. Swelling, I woke up and saw no sausage on your plate, so sad. 
it happens how to buy ruble or transfer currency to Russia as Singaporean well find the bank which is still which is still operates with a swift Hello, Mark Bain. Would love to go to Russia right now, but my government will detain me for a minimum of 48 hours upon returning. Yes, this is uh, really funny how uh, it's 100% that you will not be detained here in Russia, but you will be detained there. And you guys supposed to be like uh, a free country with uh, the respect to individual rights, personal rights, freedom of speech, what else? Freedom of your choice. Democracy. But now, you are really concerning that you will be detained with your government, not Russian government. Well, I know here the guys who are coming to visit still, uh, coming to visit Russia from the United States, from Europe. And they don't have any problems on the border. They are not getting questions with FSB or something. Eliza Bradley, hello. So now we are already in uh, a full scale, full scale historic city center. By the way, if you wonder what these lines are for, these are the line of the like uh, touristic routes. Okay, so they have like uh, several variations of how you can just walk around Perm and to be sure you are not missing anything like of the most interesting. So all you can is just to walk through the line and that's it. And they have the website, probably with English language available too, where you can watch actually, like where, where, where you can track, where you can uh, getting additional information not just like stupidly walk through the line but also to read what it is all about Aru parking okay here they have the paid parkings too now you know in St. Petersburg starting from November 1st there will be paid parking on Vasilevsky Island as well and that's how after that the whole historic city center of St. Petersburg will, will, will turn into the zone of paid parking. At first, they are integrated, the paid parking, in the central districts of St. Petersburg, like, you know, Nevsky, then the Admiralty, Admiralty districts then Petrogradsky and finally finally Vasilevsky Island the theater square Yes, when I was coming here in March, you remember I marked how 90, seems like 95% of the historic buildings here in the center, they all are renovated. Looks like new.
the city government did a really good job. You know, in Russia, I don't know how it is in uh, Europe, in the United States, in Australia, in other countries, but here in Russia, usually such a big things like a big anniversaries usually helps usually helps in making such a processes i mean of the renovations reconstructions in the city faster it is also helps like uh, the uh, government of russia to give more money for all this process so it's like they are taking the money not only from their own uh, city or regional budgets but also they are taking the money they are getting the money from the federal budget Vladimir Lenin the Lenin streets and here is Vladimir Lenin in the theater square of the Perm opera and ballet theater the time is almost nine o'clock Sberbank now it says Sberbank in Perm A typical regular Stalinist residential building. Uh, traditionally, the historic city center of Perm mostly consists of or the pre-revolutionary neoclassical architecture or I mean classical architecture or the Stalinist neoclassical architecture with some exceptions our foreign students these guys looks like Indians by the way do you know that in the Ural region it is in Perm was opened the very first university not in Yekaterinburg not in Chelyabinsk not in Omsk but in Perm okay now we are like in a real center where we can see all the activity All the people, all the transportation, the stores, malls, churches, but administration of the city of Perm. Look, this is the building of the administration, the Perm City Duma. You see this? Team Othe, Moscow is one of my most wanted places to visit. But this is Perm. This is Perm. The city of Perm. One of the oldest churches, the Church of the Nativity of Christ.
I mean Church of the Nativity of the Mother of God. Hello, Ryan Marin. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Orion Vasi, Gail Peduzzi, Denis Anatolich. I hope you enjoy this morning walk in Perm, one of the largest cities of Russia. One of the largest cities in the Urals as well. 1,027,000 presidents officially living here. And the time is 9 o'clock. It's plus two hours to Moscow and St. Petersburg. The Moscow time zone, which is Moscow, St. Petersburg, now the time is only 7 o'clock and here it's already 9 because we are 15, uh, 1500 kilometers east from St. Petersburg. Barb Foiler! Hello Barb! And thank you so much for the super chats. Never forget to say hi to Brian. Brian Feiler! Brian Feiler! Church of the Nativity of the Mother of God. Hello, Wayne Liebel. Enjoying the, the morning vibe here. Only on my channel, you can see maximum of the real Russia. As a big city, as a middle-sized city, as small towns, as uh, sometimes villages, the highways. Yeah, so many highways I was filming on. Only here, in the real time, no cuts, no waiters, you can see the real Russia. Imagine 147 million people are living here, and I'm the only one who are bringing such a stuff. Lenin streets and corner with Komsomol Avenue, Komsomolsky Prospect, High Grow Crow. The Hotel Ural. Ural means Ural. Seems like one of the biggest hotels here. And looking at its architecture, I can say that's yet from the Soviet times.
and this is Zoom, the central universal store. Peacemaker. It just looks like a church, but there's an art gallery. Probably used to be the church. But now there's an art gallery, the Komsomol Avenue. Prospects. In Russian language, Avenue called Prospect. Prospect, it's Avenue, it's like a huge street. Wide, I would say, wide. On the first floor of Tsum, here is McDonald's, which is now called Вкусная точка. Tasty. And that's it. That's how I prefer to translate Вкусная точка. Because that's what they mean. That's what they mean. They appeal to like a Russian expression when we say something and say itochka. It's like, and that's it. This is it, and that's it. It's like, makes no sense even discuss it. Makes no sense even to argue about that. Like periods, tasty periods. Uh, Lenin streets pretty much developed for the cyclists. Just today I read that uh, Perm accepted a new program for the development of the bicycle lanes all around the city. Now we will be walking through the Esplanade, Esplanade, the city's Esplanade. It's like some kind of park that goes through the center of the city on Lenin Street. Intersecting se several other streets which goes uh, perpendicular to Lenin Street. Colisee, Coliseum. Colisee, it's the name of the local mall. Okay, this is the building of the government of Leningrad region. That is the small concert hall of Perm Philharmonic. And that is the grand hall of Perm Philharmonic. Yes, 
the grand hall of Perm Philharmonic. The Lenin's Order. The real, authentic Soviet Lenin's Order. The Order of Lenin. For a big success in development of the industrial production, in 1971, the city of Perm awarded with the Order of Lenin. Ленин. Ленин lived. Ленин lives. Ленин will live. Thanks to Comrade Ленин for our happy childhood. So now, seeing the order of Ленин, now you really can tell that Perm is a no joke. The city of the real Ural region guys, the real working Ural region people. No joke, no joke. No joke, dudes. No joke. That's no joke. You was not able to get the order of Leon for nothing. The Luke Oil office, Luke Oil, one of the largest oil companies in Russia. It's written Russia Sportivne Derzhava. Russia is the sports empire. Okay. So this is our response to all those you know, woke UEFA and Olympic Committee and all that stuff. Hello, Eddie Parker. Now I think that what Russia can do is together with the countries, like, uh, first of all, Greek countries can start creating their own sport leagues, sport committees, which uh, little by little will become no less powerful than UEFA Olympic Games. and which uh, definitely will be less political. Now the sport is as political, I mean the professional big world sport, sport is as political as never, never before. 
So that's where Esplanada, I think in the English language I need to pronounce as Esplanade, begins. Esplanade of Perm in the center of the city. By the way, do you know that in the Soviet days there was the period when uh, Perm was renamed for a short time to Molotov, named after Vyacheslav Molotov, one of the revolutionaries, one of the most significant politicians of the Soviet Union, of the early days of the Soviet Union. So it was called Molotov. But now it's called Perm. And the Perm related, like uh, the word Perm related to a uh, yet ancient period. Even though the city of Perm is founded in 1723, the uh, excavations of archaeologists shows that people were living here yet like uh, thousands of years ago. I remember when I was here in August 2020, even though it was the COVID year, it was so lively here on the Esplanade. But it's not that lively in the winter time. It's colder, the fountains are turned off. Look, this is the fountain. And you saw how the kids are really love the fountains like this in Russia. Perm has a uh, professional football and hockey teams, Draghi Sokol, Hi Draghi, yes. Uh, they used to have the football club called Amkar and uh, the KHL team called Molot, the Hammer. But I think uh, the name Molot referred to the fact that it used to be called Molotov, not to the Hammer. I had no idea that Perm was such a beautiful city, fucking amazing. P. Gancito, you know, uh, you are saying what people are saying me pretty much, uh, and not only in Perm. Uh, let me tell you that my research, my all the time communication with you guys as the foreigners shows that I mean, I understand that uh, I don't have that much subscribers, but if to consider you as the focus group, I've made the conclusion that most of foreigners in the West, they only know Moscow, St. Petersburg. And uh, it's like yet good if they know at least um, Kazan and Sochi. Well, Sochi also like now knows many people because in Sochi there uh, used to be the Winter Olympic Games 2018, 2018, uh, 14, 2014, okay? But damn it, it's like almost nobody knows Nizhny Novgorod. Krasnodar. Великий Новгород, Челябинск, Екатеринбург, Новосибирск. Well, some people, of course, know Vladivostok, especially like the Asians. But mostly people don't know. Ellie Barker. Russia full control. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks so much. And I was taking you to 90 cities and towns. 
Okay. I was taking you to Samara, Ulyanovsk, Sviyarsk, Kazan, Chubaksare, Nizhny Novgorod, Moscow, Sergiev Passat, Pereslavl Zaleski, Rostov the Great, Kostroma, Yaroslavl, Ivanovo, Vladimir, Suzdal, Arzamas, Muram. St. Petersburg, of course, Vyborg, Pskov, Ivan Goros on the border with Estonia, with Narva, Tiriberka village, Barents Sea, Murmansk, Alenigorsk, Munchigorsk, Apatiti, Kirovsk, Kandalaksha, Heim, Belomorsk, Segeja, Petrozavodsk, Kindesva village, Kinerama village, Ruskiala Park, Karyala Park, uh, Rezan, Tambov, Saransk, Penza, Kumertau, Ufa, Birsk, Arenburg, Serletamak, Shekhan Mountains, Tavtimanova Village, uh, Magnitogorsk, Chelyabinsk, Екатеринбург, Тюмень, Перм, Кировск, Вологда. А, не Кировск, а not Кировск. Кировск too, but also Киров. Киров и Кировск are different places. А, Аша, Миньяр, Сим, Усть-Катав, Златоуст, Белорецк, Нефтекамск. Агидель, Ижевск, Воткинск, Ростов-он-Дон, Краснодар, Сочи, Адлер, Донецк. Yeah, I, I can't even remember them all now. And look, if we will return to what we have started with in terms of this question, in terms of this discussion is that and, and most people seems knows just Moscow and St. Petersburg maybe, maybe Kazan and Sochi but all the rest like yet yeah, Tver, Veliki Novgorod, Valdai oh, oh man Luga Now here on this esplanade, the monument to the heroes of front and rear. It's pretty important to remember and glorify not only all those who fought for Russia in the years of World War II in the front lines, but also used to be in so-called rear. And here in Perm, People understand it. People understand it. Because uh, Perm was that rear city. But very important, no less important. Here the guys were making the stuff which was no less important for the needs of the war than what they were making there on the front line because without without a good rear there's no success on the front there can't be success on the front So you see, uh, on the left, this is the soldier, 
who perform on the front and the lady and the man on the right they looks like the workers the workers of the factories the people like this were making the stuff ammunition tanks airplanes for the needs of the front Sergey make a trip to Sevastopol, Perm is awesome, so it would be nice to see difference. Eventually I will make the trip to Sevastopol. You see? You see I'm making the I'm making the trips all the time. And you are telling me to go to Sevastopol for making the difference? I'm making the difference all the time, okay? You're just taking it for granted. And you are telling me, oh, and now go to another place to make the difference. We've missed you. We are together. The hashtag we've missed you. Colors in the colors of Russian flag, of the great Russian flag. Kaliningrad. I was in Kaliningrad. I was I was in 90 cities and towns. Whenever I can go to a different uh, cities and towns, I go. On the other side of Esplanade, there's the drama theater. This is the drama theater. Sergey, I just read online that Perm has an amazing zoo, snow leopards. Yeah, all the big, all the big Russian cities are having a nice zoos. It's uh, almost uh, nine thirty. I finally need to make stop somewhere in the coffee shop for a quick coffee. You know, I somehow was not lucky to drink coffee after I landed in Perm. Today I landed in Perm in the local time. It was 6.55 and then immediately I taking the taxi that to come here in the city itself and to start streaming. I thought, well, I definitely will find at least the coffee shop or something. But it seems in Perm, even though like it's a big city. However, everything seems closed exactly until 8 o'clock. And that's when I scheduled my live stream. And not only yet I had, I hadn't breakfast, but not even coffee. Well, I don't care about breakfast now. I do not feel hungry, but would be nice now to get a, a good cup of coffee. After this live stream, I will go to the hotel and then I will come back to you in the evening. I told you in the beginning of the stream that I figured out that it's better when I go to the cities like this, it's better coming on Friday. At first I used to come to the cities on the Saturdays, 
in the winter time in the winter time for many reasons i can't just jump in a car and uh, drive from city to the city but i can like jump into the airplane and uh, just to come to one city in a week and making two live streams from the city in the morning and in the evening but when i streamed in the morning on saturday nights it's like nobody only street cleaners and people like all the time were asking me where are the people okay but now you see it's uh, much better here on friday because on friday it's still a working day and so many people and on saturday most people prefer to stay at home especially in the winter and uh, they're like only street cleaners and uh, that crazy freaking youtuber with a camera Freaking YouTuber! Drama theater. Perm drama theater. I'm now gonna stop uh, in the nearest coffee shop. And now that's already a newer part of the historic city center. You see how all that pre-revolutionary uh, buildings and the buildings of Stalinist periods changed for just uh, the Khrushchev residential buildings. Shelly Vasquez, hello and thank you for the super sticker. Hey Victor, no tent city, no homeless or mental cases, amazing. Yeah, that's Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Russia. Hello, Alexandra K. Judy Butterfield, hello and thank you. Enjoy perm. Today reached uh, fifteen hundred kilometers to bring you this live stream. Enjoy. Wayne Wheat Hills, hello from Canada. Is that snow on the ground? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's the snow. Yeah, I mean, like real snow.
It's not a cotton, or how to say this in English. However, it's still like a very, very late, late autumn here because you see, however, here and there we still can see some yellow leaves and even the green leaves and not too much snow yet. Alexandra telling you once again and again it's minus three degrees Celsius Hello Christopher Hike Nadia Mock slides Really looking forward for the coffee shop. I need some coffee. Come on. Cherski Dom, Czech Republic House. Yeah, now can you imagine the Russian house in Czech Republic? No way. Stephen Cleary on the move with Sergey. We are definitely on the move. We're on the move. Ablaka, the clouds, restaurant and bar. Looks like a really huge restaurant. Now again we are meeting the Stalinist buildings. Hi Sergey Popov. Blinne, Blinne Skvarotka, the pan. It's a pancake place. Pancakes, Blinne, the pancakes Russian style. It's a thin pancakes. Hills are the buses running on electric or diesel. I think here the most buses are still running on diesel, 
but in uh, Moscow and St. Petersburg most of buses already like turned to the electric engines the renovation of the facade хорошая пекарня good bakery good bakery usually in such a bakeries there is a good there is a good bakery but awful coffee i need like the real coffee shop multipolarist you could write an annual book about all the good bars and restaurants in russia or a book about interesting places and areas that you definitely need to visit that would be great multipolarist thank you so much for such a uh, general super chat it is definitely something what helps with this road trips and yeah maybe a one day I will write the book, you know, my memories, my memories about me visiting all over Russia, but maybe not because instead of my memories book, I will have all my videos. I already will have all my videos. Salon Красоты, the beauty salon, Golden Rose. Hello, Amar Miranda. You know, not far, relatively, relatively not far from Perm. Here is a former Gulag prison, which is now turned into the museum. Everybody can come there and to see what it was like to be in a Gulag prison, or at least uh, what it is, how, how, it, how it really looked like. Are you working so early already? Man, wake up. Wake up, man. Wake up. Not only I'm already doing my awesome work, making the live stream, but I already flew 1500 kilometers just to start this live stream, okay? So wake up. Wake up, man. No, Alexandra, I myself was not in that Gulag Museum yet. But I definitely uh, gonna visit one day.
Hello, Joe Hernandez. There is already at the border of the historic city center. You see that sign with the name of the city of Perm. The railway. There is the freight train with cisterns. That is how the economy of Russia works. This is Zag's, uh, how to say, how to say, this is the department of registrations of the marriages and uh, once this is the Friday and Friday and Saturday the most popular day for uh, the marriages. So today here is going to be a lot of, a lot of newly married pairs who will come here for the official ceremony uh, official ceremony of the registration of their marriage Uh, Joe Hernandez, Jadis, 1210. Long time no see, been busy. Get coffee on me. How is the family? Yeah, welcome back. Thank you so much. The family is good. Everything is all right. Hello, CD Ellie. Loikin, yeah, stop, you fools. What are you doing? Don't marry, don't marry. That's what you mean, right? Aren't church weddings not as common then? Look, church wedding, it's a church wedding. It's a religious part. But official part is official part. <laughs> Drag your circle for your perm haircut, Sergey. Yeah, we just saw, we just saw, uh, it's called? barber shop but recently I went to barber shop I still go to that barber shop where the guy named Timo Timo he said his mother is from Finland Timo still making the haircut for me Okay, let's turn to another street. I now gotta go to Pernske, the Perm Street. Oh, pub, 
Cheshire cats. That definitely looks like a stout look. What time is it, Sergey? That's already 9.48. It's almost 10 o'clock. Meanwhile, in Moscow and St. Petersburg, it's almost 8 o'clock. Wayne Hills, why is it named Herm? What does that word mean? This is, there are several versions about it, but uh, the scientists are thinking that it is related to the Finna Ugric language. Do you know what is, do you know, you ever heard about Finna Ugrics? Okay, I'm now walking more like the secondary street. One of the biggest complaints to me from my haters, or maybe not only haters, that is like, oh, you show only the best parts of the cities. Completely ignoring that uh, many of those 90 cities and towns that I have already visited, they were as small as I walked them all from the south to the north and from the west to the east. Okay, and not only there, I used to show the secondary streets. I like used to show the whole freaking streets. Like for example, especially those Murmansk region or Karelia, the Republic of Karelia of Russia towns. Like for example, Olenigorsk, only like 20,000 residents, okay? I mean, really, for two hours I was able to walk all the way from the south to the north and then to the west and from the west to the east. The guys are seems just often getting disappointed. They don't see so much of uh, shit here in the streets of St. Petersburg. They all the time are getting told about. Okay, so here is the secondary streets. Wayne Hills, yes, Finnish Ugric I learned about over 40 years ago as part of intro to European history. All right, good. Then you are not that stupid, okay? Jan Olaf Johansson, hello and welcome to Perm, 1500 kilometers east from St. Petersburg, two hours flight. 
Multipolarist, have you ever met the Australian guy Russell from the YouTube channel Traveling with Russell? He shows the non-liberal real Russia and its great people. Yeah, I I saw his channel. Uh, he is uh, making the stuff mostly like visiting the places, you know, especially the malls, like grocery supermarkets and all this stuff. But I never met him yet. Thank you for the super chats. Hello, Tatiana. Yes, it's good that uh, that traveling with Russell guy decided not to hype, not to hype on Russia the way most are making this. Now it's uh, the easiest way, the easiest way to gain. The subscribers on YouTube. It's like making the videos exposing Russia, condemning Russia, and all that stuff. Making the sensationalism of it. Showing how much Russia suffered now under unprecedented sanctions. Yeah, telling how a little bit more, just a little bit more, and it will collapse like the house of cars. Just wait a little bit more. Like I saw the videos like yet more than an hour ago, uh, more than an, uh, a year ago. Oh, Putin is desperate. He's already desperate. He's already controlled nothing. He is just sitting in his bunker, trembling. And then we see Putin coming to Mariupol and driving the car there. And other stuff like that. Uh, there's a big segment of people in the West who actually don't even really care if that's truth or not. But this is something what they want to hear. Kindergarten. Such a typical Soviet kindergarten. Now this looks like a polyclinic. I'm in Egypt for the moment. Good, good. Have a great vacation there. Enjoy your time.
I know Bill Clinton. This is one of the new developments. Looks pretty much different, right? The, all those pre revolutionary buildings and the Stalinist stuff and even the Khrushchev stuff. Draghi Sokol, yeah. Actually, they are, they are having the story playing like Putin got a cancer at least since 2012. But every time they are beginning to talk about it again, everybody's like, gonna believe that again. Some churches of Perm. And meanwhile, here it's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock local time, 8 o'clock in St. Petersburg, from where I came today. Eddie Barker, Putin's perfectly fine and take it over. Yeah, it seems so. Those I remember how yet in 2012 they were saying he is not okay and uh, we're like making the analyze of how he looks like. And it's like the specialists in uh, physiognomics, physiognomics we're making the analyze and uh, absolutely came to conclusion that Putin is in a bad shape due to the cancer. That was yet in 2012 at least, at least. I mean, this is like the first time I remember myself uh, hearing such a stories. What's this? Okay, that's one of the branches of one of the branches of the road police, and this is the lights the historic traffic lights in 1956 on the crossroads of Karl Marx Street and Lenin Street was installed the first traffic lights in Perm region yeah you know um, until 1950s the road traffic in Russia and Soviet Union was controlled with you know like those guys with the with the road policemen policemen they were giving the direction but then started turning all the traffic into the automatic system of the traffic lights late Soviet Union series of uh, so-called panel buildings. You see, it's not the bricks, it's the panels. So they, right from the factory, they, are, they were bringing already completed panels. And uh, just like in the constructor, they had to get them together. And that's it.
Oh yes, yeah. oh yes, Kuiki Lorsa. Yes, they really love that. Putin's clone theory. Not only he has clone, but he has like clo clones. And they even have the nickname for every clone. By the way, I forgot how I actually wanted to stop in the coffee shop. Soviet architecture. Now it's time for me to connect my power bank. You're getting a workout, Sergey. Yes, I am. And I'm pretty much trained already. In the beginning of this year, for the celebration of New Year 2022-2023, my wife's sister and her husband's with their daughter, they were coming to visit us in St. Petersburg. And uh, I got to my stream, my regular walking stream, uh, Timur, I mean the husband of my wife's sister. And guess what? He was like, Ugh! he was like dying already after 30 minutes of of us just walking in the moments when i felt that i'm just beginning he felt like he's completely done like he's done he's completely done i mean he said he can't walk so it's interesting how physically physically he is actually like stronger than me because he is a village guy but in terms of stamina i have a stronger f stamina because look because i'm walking a lot so while i train stamina he is like mostly a training Used to, or at least like used, used used to train used to train his physical activity like uh, making making a lot of physical things like being a village guy okay so he's stronger but his stamina is weak i'm not as strong as him physically but i have a better stamina Look, now you probably can recognize that I'm walking parallel to Lenin Street. This is Permske Street. Another mall. So yes, if we would fight with Timur, he would beat me, because I was not cutting as many wood chops as he did in my life. But on the walking or running marathon, I will not leave him any chance. So you know what I mean? Who is stronger, Timur or Kirill? Look, they are not related because uh, uh, Timur is a new boyfriend of Anastasia. Uh, and Anastasia, it's uh, just uh, Albina's friends.
Finally, hey, finally. I found just a proper coffee shop. Lin Haunstein. Thank you, sir. Maybe show maps so we can orient ourselves to St. Petersburg City or Moscow. Sadly, few maps with names in English, so we can understand Russian names verbally. Look, um, I think Google Maps just uh, making a great job. It's the first thing. Second thing, I'm now not in St. Petersburg. Now I'm in uh, frigging, uh, I'm in a perm, okay? And so anyway, I was, I was, I was trying, I was trying to find a way how I can um, impress the map in the real time on this screen, but somehow I can't find how to make it, okay? Anyway, if you just will open up the map, I always say, I always say the names of the streets, I'm commenting where I'm turning, what I see, you really can track. Those ones who really like want to track, they track that. Jan Olaf Johansson for real time and real life. 1000 of Egypt money. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Здравствуйте. Мне необходим кофе латте большой. Без каких-либо добавок, можно только с сахаром. 550 мл или чуть поменьше? Давайте прям 550. А, можно там 3 сахара добавить. Оплата по карте. Да, сейчас. Секундочку. Да, сейчас. Надо мне достать. Куда? А. Я раз такой вижу. Mm, хорошо, спасибо. All right, waiting, waiting. Two, three minutes, she said. How much is the cost of coffee? Uh, look, three hundred fifty milliliters, one hundred fifty rubles. 450 milliliters, which is considered as large, 180, and XL, which is more than a half a liter, 550 milliliters, which I now ordered, it's uh, 200 rubles. So it's from 150 to two dollars per cup. Thank you, sir. I will try Google Maps. Yeah, uh, really, I was trying to find because look, it, it's 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 probably it's probably possible to do that, but at first you need to have additional device uh, like application in your other phone, which will track in you, and then yes, will give that information into the uh, into the uh, just a website and opens access where without logging in uh, you can like get success through the widget widget in in uh, prison live studio in the application that i stream with so here i can um, get a widget like i'm making for donation alerts with the name of the site and on that site but on that site must be my information in the real time and it must like getting refreshed all the time. Do you have hot chocolate in Russia? No, never heard. Come on, man. Hot chocolate? We never heard anything about that. What what is that? What is that? I hard I hardly know what is what is the chocolate? I mean, once I saw the chocolate bar in my life, but I mean, like hot chocolate. Whoa, whoa. Can you show the coffee? Okay, but I think it's just a coffee. Coffee is just a coffee. Hey guys. Did you ever heard? Did you ever heard? 
about hot chocolate. Sandra, 1209, here is milk with chocolate. Hmm, sounds interesting. Being an agricultural country, being, no, being an outdated agricultural country, well, I know what is milk, but still not sure what is chocolate. Well, I told you, like, once I saw what is chocolate, but I'm not sure how it's possible. How it's possible to make it. What? You see? I got coffee. It's 550 milliliters. Whoa. Whoa. No, finally, finally, finally. Yeah, I said, like, uh, being an outdated uh, agricultural country, this is actually the... A reference. That is the reference to some of my haters who loves coming here from time to time and saying that Russia is undeveloped country. Just like yesterday, I had the Chinese, at least he uh, sent the comment in Chinese language, telling me that uh, Russia is a third-rate country, okay, third-rate country. Like, we still have some nice arts, but in terms of the technologies, economy, uh, science, we are already undeveloped third-rate country. Hey Wayne, come on. We have and coffee and tea and cacao and hot chocolate. Man, wake up, man. Wake up. Yes, and we have paper cups. And we have the cars, not only uh, freaking horses. Hi, Mel, love Perm. It will be a place to visit when I go back to Russia. Russia is amazing. Yes. Uh, one of the reasons I decided to visit Perm today because, um, well, you know that uh, one of my favorite cities, favorites. Well, one of my most favorite cities to visit is uh, Kazan, Nizhny Novgorod, Samara, uh, Yekaterinburg. But I'm really waiting for when the real winter will come. And there I will go when uh, we already can see Kazan, Nizhny Novgorod, Samara in all its uh, New Year's slash Christmas beauty with all the snow with all the uh, Christmas decorations. Yeah, it's uh, like closer to December. Then why do the Chinese buy S400 and SU35? Yeah, good question. Ooh. 
I've got a new jacket, by the way. Uh, principally, principally. I mean, with a matter of principle, I purchased that in a Russian Austin uh, brand store, Austin. It's Austin, it's just like a, it's a mass market, but it's a nice mass, mass market. Uh, they have a store in Galleria Mall. I show you all the time and that's it. You see only $90 and a nice winter jacket. Uh, this hat I've got for only nine bucks in the local St. Petersburg store. It's like the whole local production, like uh, the brands, they are making just the hats. It's called Anru, A-N-R-U, Anru. And they are located just uh, not far from uh, my residential complex on Nevsky Prospect, the house 134, okay? So you see it, nice designers, they call this designers hat. Um, this one is like for nine bucks. Well, in Russian rubles, it's 850 rubles. So it's a nice coffee break now. My airplane landed at 6.55 and I had only one hour like to jump into the taxi, like to get out of the airplane, uh, to get to the taxi and to come in the center of Perm. And uh, I never was drinking coffee there because I was sure that, well, at least coffee I will always find in Perm. But Perm even is even so big. However, they don't have, they seems like they have, but not everywhere, far not everywhere. Seems like most places uh, opens at eight o'clock and that's when I started my stream. And uh, since I, since I get out of my home, I never had any coffee. I got coffee at home and then I called taxi. At first I wanted to go uh, by car and just to park my car there in the airport but then I checked it out that uh, uh, the minimum price there is 1000 rubles which is 10 bucks and I will be more than 24 hours out and that's mean that actually I will have to pay for two days so it's like 20 bucks 20 bucks and this is about the same as I will just take taxi but when you take taxi you are like relaxed okay you're just like relaxing okay so that's why I prefer to call the taxi which will driving me okay then I will drive myself So I called taxi, came to the airport. Uh, not sure why I was not drinking coffee in the airport. Just never wanted. Then I was flying for two hours. Then I got taxi. Then I was walking here for two hours and uh, 10 minutes before I finally met this proper coffee shop. You know, I love proper coffee. At least if I like pay for this, okay. Uh, there can there can be nothing better than a nice coffee in the morning. In the winter, like morning like this, almost winter morning, and there can be nothing worse 
than a bad coffee, okay? Taxi, $40 round trip. No, no, look, no. It's like about, it's, it's about 20 bucks, 20 bucks uh, from, um, my, from my apartments to Polkova airports and back. And it will be about the same to give for two days for parking of my car there, okay? Because even though I will be like about 27 hours out, however, they will charge me for the whole day. So they will charge me for two days and they will charge me 20 bucks. So about the same price as my round trip uh, with a taxi. But when I'm on taxi, I'm relaxed, okay? I mean, they carry me, they carry me in the moments when I have to drive myself. And also like when I will return, like taxi you just call taxi and there is always hundreds of taxis and uh, the taxi comes in two minutes while if i will park my car there i will have to go to the parking and then yes i will have to wait like for 15 minutes uh when the engine will get warmed up so that's also like a a little disadvantage so that's why it's uh, easier for the same money just call taxi and they will just uh, you know carry me uh, i don't know in which condition i will return tomorrow maybe i will be like super tired or sleepy so it's better for me uh, to be loaded into the uh, back seats of the taxi and that's it okay Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and now let's continue our walk. Uh, enough of coffee break for today. Enough of coffee break. Come on, man. Oh, look, it's uh, 187 viewers, which is now finally we have a realistic, realistic view counts on my channel, which is today was attacked with uh, the boats, the bots. It's uh, my trolls are sending the bots to my channel, like rolling the views, fake views, fake likes, and I hate it because potentially, potentially this can um, really like to spoil the algorithms of my channel. I think that YouTube will just. Uh, recognize it as uh, the spam and so we're not even taking them into consideration but it, it's it's in the best case scenario in the worst case scenario uh, they YouTube will consider that those boats were interested in my channel and I don't know like uh, what's the backgrounds those boats are having. Will you show the hotel room, Kimberly Oakley? No, because I never, I never booked any hotel yet. It's the first thing. Another thing is that even if I booked the hotel, I actually have to wait until at least uh, 1 p.m., 13 o'clock, and now it's uh, 10 26. Uh, look, normally the uh, check-in time check-in time in the russian hotels like 99 hotels in russia i saw check-in time 2 p.m but sometimes they allow like to check in at uh, 1 p.m maybe at 12 30 okay because uh, it depends on and sometimes depends on each certain uh, reception lady if uh, it's uh, just a normal you know person and if they already have some rooms available they will say yes because they are thinking that okay so we will allow this guy like to settle down earlier but it will affect our 
uh, reputation in a positive way, okay? And they allow that. Uh, or it depends on if, if there's already some clean rooms because they check out time 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and they are leaving those two hours between 12 and 2 o'clock to clean up the rooms. Are you going to stream tonight? Yes, of course. Yes. Um, I, I'm, uh, look, I, I was flying for 15,000, uh, 1,500 kilometers. A round trip, it will be 3,000 kilometers. Not for just a one morning stream. Uh, Friday is great uh, to film the city. At first in a Friday morning routine because it's still the working day and in the evening already in its uh, weekend mode because that's when the city already uh, beginning the weekend. Most people are having the last working day on Friday and a Friday night they already go for for party. You don't have any baggage with you, Sergey? Not even a backpack? No, I don't have. Uh, all I have is my two phones. One phone is iPhone 13 I film with. One phone is like my secondary phone, iPhone 11. Uh, so, you see, I always have the second phone because otherwise, otherwise there's like no connection with me, okay? So, I need to have my phone especially when I go to another cities um, still even if I am returning to any cities like for the second third time I still don't know the like all streets or remember them that well so it's important to have the second phone I have city cam which is like my pocket my pocket is enough to place the steady cam because uh, Steadicam is like, you know, I can fold it, I can fold it, and it's enough. So all I need is, is like uh, the phone, then I need ah, um, power bank, of course, power bank, two phones, power bank, Steadicam, uh, also uh, the card, and that's it, that's it. And all the rest I can get in a hotel. Mostly what I need is just a toothpaste and a toothbrush and that's it. And you see, I don't even need the shower because now I came, I'm walking here now in almost winter, I don't even sweat. I don't even really need like uh, the uh, bath bath i mean the shower well if in the hotel i will go so they will have the shower i will get the shower but if not then not because after my evening stream i just will leave back home and that's where i will take the shower actually uh now my this trip will be done in a little bit more than 24 hours okay so I don't need much. All I need is just like my steady cam, my phones, my power bank, and that's it. Nothing more. What the gloves, gloves. And what about toothpaste and uh, toothbrush? Even in a shitty hostels, they always have like that one timer, one timers, you know what I mean? How to say this, one timer. I mean, it's uh, that set of tooth brush, toothpaste, shampoo, that you can use for only one time. And yes, I often uh, staying in like the most 
in the like the cheapest in the cheapest places. Because you see I have the budget for travels. And less I'm spending, more I save up the budget for the further trips. And this is how I've made it already to over 90 cities and towns. 90. Just imagine, 90. Another thing is when I'm coming to the cities after the or like a between of the live streams in the morning and in the evening all I need is just to get a sleep okay so I don't care just give me the bed and that's it why do I have to worry much about the uh, uh, how fancy is the hotel room if all I need is just to get some sleep between of the streams And then I will fly back home. The Hotel Urals. <clears throat> I have to be efficient. Because many expenses, taxi, airplane, the food, because when I'm here, I, I, I have to eat in the cafes. Hotel. Okay, and now I'm gonna turn to Komsomol Avenue. The Perm Bear. Yes, the nature of Perm is rich, it's rich. In the forests of Perm, Perm region, you definitely will meet the bears. Don't be ashamed of a discount hotel. Some of them are cozy. You used to show. Uh, I'm not ashamed. I never said that I'm ashamed. I'm just telling you. Actually, vice versa. I'm, 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 what I'm trying to say that I don't care. I don't care. I mean, of course, it would be nice to stay in a better hotel, but I mean, like spending 50 bucks, at least 50 bucks for just uh, for just uh, me, like sleeping there in between of the streams. I don't care. Another thing is that would be like my vacation. I would come here with my family. Then yes, then comfort. 
would be uh, really important but when I'm traveling like this solo I don't care all I care is just a couch and uh, it, it like to be quiet there to be quiet in the hotel I turn to Komsomol Avenue another hotel it's called Prikamye Prikamye means Prikama region here is an art object which is called Permyak Salone Uši look Permyak is uh, the resident of Perm it's like uh, the resident of Moscow is uh, Moscovite Moskvich, Moscovite the resident of like uh, the local for Perm it's Permyak and often about Permyaks we are saying Permyak Salone Uši the salted ears Permyak the salted ears that's because back in the days many locals in Perm used to work uh, for the salt company and they used to carry the bags with the salt on their shoulder and the bag was how to say like uh, rubbing their ears and the ears were getting absorbed with salt that what was making their ears like red and that was uh, was increasing their ears you see so here we see like such a bigger ears and that was happening under the affection of uh, that salt salt uh, the bags with the salt that all the time was uh, rubbing their ears when they were uh, carrying them on their shoulder okay permyak salone uši so that's how this art object called uh, people can photograph here just put their face there and it will look like they have those salted ears the typical ears for those permyak uh, permyaks permyak residents who used to work in the uh, salt enterprise here Matthew Duquette uh, I'm visiting Perm region for new year looking forward to visiting Perm 36 uh, yeah yeah Matthew enjoy your visits I already told you I already told you today that the Perm 36 that's where it's located one of a former Gulag prisons the Soviet prisons Gulag famous gulag prison one off and now uh, it turns into the museum now everybody can come there and uh, uh, to find out what it really was how it really looked like that prison and Mate Duquette going to visit Perm just like in two months from now Perm region This is the Polytechnical University. I remember how I was in March here in Perm and it was about the same weather but it was a different vibe and different feeling because back then I was understanding that this is the beginning of the spring and now I understand this is the beginning of the winter
Sergey, why didn't you sleep at the Gulag? Wow, so funny, man, so funny. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Yeah, so funny. Hold me seven people. Yeah, in Russia we have we have such a saying like, hey, hold me seven people at once. Like, whoa, this is so laughing, as laughing as, hey, hold me seven people. Держите меня семеро. Какой забавный! And now the prosecutor's office of uh, the Perm region. Yeah, imagine, imagine that really the beginning of spring and the beginning of the winter really looks pretty similar, but absolutely different flavor. Because one thing, when you understand this is the beginning of the spring and summer, another thing when you understand this is the beginning of the winter. Hi, Winnie Pooh. We have a saying, it's so funny, I forgot to laugh. Yeah, it's like, hold me seven people. Yeah, it's also like used in the sarcastic, in sarcastic sense. Глеб Успешкин. Yeah, this is the Linden Alley. Yeah, I, yes, Глеб, Глеб saying that it was developed just this year. And I remember this. I remember when I was here, I was here in March, they still were finishing this alley. А ты сам что ли? Ты сам откуда? Что, местный что ли? Ебать. Комсомол Авеню. Комсомол – это комитет для советских юных. Комсомол.
I'm not even sure what it is. It's like a perm regional solve prof. Что? Solve prof. So I'm now walking to the to the building with the tower. It's called the Tower of Death. And that's the local park of culture and leisure. It's named after Maxim Gorky. The local Gorky Park, dudes. Selfie cafe. It's probably a nice cafe for making selfies there. That's how they probably trying to attract the Instagram lovers audience, especially the ladies. No criminal perm. Hey Victor. What a Kremlin, considering Perm was founded in 1723. It had to be founded at least like... 15-something. They are already were not constructing the Kremlins in uh, the middle, almost in the middle of 18th century. October, the Children's Entertaining Center. Глеб Успешкин sent the Super Chats на поездку по Перми. На поездку по Перми. Спасибо. Meanwhile, that's already almost 11 o'clock. Soon, the early morning time, I started yet even before the sunrise, but now it's already the time when people will go for lunch. The time goes by. Oh, 
Okay, some new neighborhoods. You know, sometimes, usually the historic city centers are like all busy with uh, an older constructions, older buildings. But still, here and there, they are finding the spots for a brand new neighborhoods to develop in the historic city center. This is one of them. Греб, греб, греб. The Revolution Streets. So the corner of Revolution Streets and Komsomol Avenue. Who wants to see Sergei streaming from Yakutsk in January? I think everybody wants. Hello, Agrippin. Не стяг, не стяг, не стяг, че. Буду знать. A big concentration of Stalinist buildings on Komsomol Avenue. And that's no wonder. No super chat, no Yukutsk. Hey, Victor. Yeah. No memberships, no Yakutsk. I still have only 0.3% of uh, my subs joint membership. And so uh, for going to Yakutsk, Kamchatka, Vladivostok or Magadan, I need or, or the subscribers, existing subscribers, uh, increased uh, uh, I, I mean, joint more of my existing subscribers joint membership, or me just to gain more subscribers. And I think this is what I need to do. <clears throat> because what I figured out is that those people who like really wanted to join my channel, 
I mean, who wanted to join the membership of my channel, they already did that, okay? And uh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how many more of stuff I will bring in from all over Russia. Those ones who never wanted to join, they will not join the membership. And those who wanted, they already did that. Wanted or like had the possibility. So, just uh, need to let the time go because little by little, but the amount of my subscribers, like it's gaining, it's increasing all the time. And little by little, the uh, amount of members growing up to uh, normally the new members are always coming off like the new members but I'm not in a hurry let it go is it go I wish I could stay, but I don't want uh, to spoil my New Year's trip to Perm. I understand what you mean. All right. Anna Pernikov, hello, Anna. Hi, Sergey. How long time? Hope you are well, my friends. I'm well, I'm well. Thank you very much. Welcome back. And I hope you are well too. Eleven o'clock, local time and firm. This looks like a house of culture. Let me see what it is. I'm going to check it out. Well, now it's uh, the constructing or construction college. The college where they prefer the specialists in construction. That's what it is. CG Ellie just became a member. Thank you for joining the membership. Welcome to my 0 0.3 club. 0 0.3. Yeah, it's interesting how there is never there is never more than 0.3% of people from the amounts of my uh, subs, total amount of subs who are joining the membership. So it seems like it's a normal, it's a normal. Uh, it means that one of 300 subscribers joining the membership. Okay, so now I'm about to wish that, uh, to reach that tower, the tower of death. So maybe that used to be the building of KGB. And that's why they decided to call it like that. Really, I need to check this story. Like, why the hell it's called like that?
Maybe Глеб Успешкин will tell us who is, if I understand it right, a local. Okay, look, I was right. Gleb Uspeshkin said this is the building of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. It's not really FSB, but it's like the Ministry of the Police. The architecture of Stalinist era. Looks very cold, but still as beautiful as ever. Love Russia. Look, Anna, it's uh, only minus three degrees Celsius. So it's not cold at all. Uh, I mean, it's relatively not cold for the winter. Ah, uh, you see? You see, I do not even wear the gloves. It's pretty warm. No winds. Minus three. At this time of the year, it's like nothing. Well, of course, if you're not, say, yeah, it's like a soy boy. Okay, Gleb Uspeshkin said that there's a legend that uh, yes, that's it's it was the place where they were torture the criminals Have to buy some falafel. Jan Olaf Johansson, see you later. Yeah, see you, man. Okay, I'm gonna wait. Don't wanna run. We are not in a hurry.
So, a former building of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. The Tower of the Death. Well, however, even if that's the truth, that the police used to torture the most dangerous criminals there, I don't think it was happening in the tower. Probably that was happening in the basement. But the people loves the drama stories. Meanwhile, let me tell you, a Victor, that you have a problem with the mathematics, okay? You have a problem with the mathematics. 0.3% from 35,000, that's not 1,000 pixels, okay? That's 3%, which is 10 times more than 0.3%. Go back to school. Southern fried chicken. Whoa, I never been to the Southern fried chicken. Let me check how at least it looks like. Mexican series. A simply lip licking flavor. I'm not gonna eat now, maybe later. And look, they don't have English language. Tortilla, burgers, chicken, chicken wings, french fries, strips. Oh, pasikunchiki. This is a firm dish of perm. Pusikunchiki. they look like some kind of dumplings. It's like a fried dumplings. Okay. Mini tartilic chicken grill. Hey Victor, my mistake. Of course it's your mistake. You don't see the difference between 3% and 0.3%. Of course, it's your fault. I mean, your mistake. Yeah, Gleb, maybe later. Maybe later. I now don't want to stop. Maybe later we'll we'll make uh, the separate video just about it. Ты мне лучше напиши, где лучшие посекунчики. Я потом, когда закончу, может быть отдельное видео просто сниму. Потому что мне кажется здесь по столько по сколько посекунчики. Don't really need English menu, just look at the pictures. 
yes uh, here in many restaurants you will find a thick menus with the pictures that's why they are thick but you know like uh, the best restaurants those restaurants who are thinking that they are the real restaurants they are against the pictures in the menu and uh, they are intentionally do not they are intentionally do not uh, post any pictures in their menus yes here at least in russia there's an opinion that the real restaurants the real premium premium restaurants they don't have to have the pictures in their menus Uh, swelling sausage is another another man who has the problem with the math. Hi, Stefan Brunner. Do you use salt to de-ice your streets? Ah. Uh, in many places, yes, but now no any salt used yet. It just was not many snow yet. So it seems like only maybe once or twice was the snow, which has already melted, at least on the roads, because people are walking here. You see, it is still staying. It is still staying on. The lawn, if I can say so, but it is already all melted on the asphalt. Information man show peace and respect. Yeah, thank you. If they would use the salt now, actually it's not salt. We call it salt just like to, uh, like to make it simple. But in fact, it's not the salt. It's some kind of reagent, reagent, chemical reagent, okay? But we simply call it salt. However, yes, uh, well now, right now, it would leave a huge, such a, you know, like a white, um, prints, if I can say so. Uh, yes. So, okay. Let's let me finish with the question. They use. Let's call it salt, but now they never used it yet. It wasn't that much snow yet to start using it. Now that's, that would be a waste of that salt. Not to mention the sidewalks would look not that nice. Hello, Albina Baklikova. My wife is here. Okay. Uh, Albina, Albina just wants me to respond. What's up? Let's go to the alley of the Red Army. Глеб, я там уже был в самом начале стрима. 
Ты мне лучше про посекунчики напиши. The monuments to the labor veiler, the labor veiler of Perm. Да, да, скажи. Просто я думаю, что отдельным небольшим видео можно снять. Сейчас я не хочу останавливаться. Perm. Okay, so once you just joined. Let me remind you that today I'm in the town, the city, yeah, the city of Perm. This is the city which is located in 15 kilometers east from St. Petersburg. Two hours flight from St. Petersburg. I landed here today in the morning, 7 o'clock local time, and already at 8 o'clock I started to stream Perm the 15th largest city in russia and it's one of the largest cities in the urals region here we are not far from the uh, uh, western parts of the urals mountain range being far from the front lines in the years of world war ii so many enterprises from the western parts of russia was evacuated here and started to work here here wasn't any battles in perm being so far from the front but they were making a lot of a lot of job like a labor job making the ammunition and all this stuff one of the reasons why Perm chosen to be one of those cities to evacuate the enterprises is that Perm was founded in 1723 by the order of Peter the Great as uh, the copper smelting works on the bank of Kama River. We are on the bank of one of the largest rivers of Russia along with Volga. Volga, Kama, you know, there's still a lot of, like, argues about it, like, which river is bigger? Volga or Kama? So, being on the bank of Kama, having the developed enterprises here, uh, being also right on the railway, which is a part of Trans-Siberian Railway, this is something what strategically really helped Perm to become one of those Rhea cities, the cities of the Rhea. The front can't be good without a good rear. Because, you know, in the front lines, the soldiers, the militaries, they are like, you know, how to, they are the executives. They are executives. They are making the executive work. But they are supplied with the rear. That's Pizza and Fevronia. You remember a month ago, I was taking you to the town of Murom. That's where they are from. And I told you their story. 
Pizza and Fevronia. They are now considered to be the saints of love, family. And that's the alley of the Soviet Red Army. By the way, suddenly a sunny day. When I was watching the forecast for today on Google on Google Weather, uh, Google like Yandex Yandex Weather, Yandex Weather, it used to show that it's going to be dry, but it's going to be cloudy. But now suddenly it's really sunny, which is nice for us. Because imagine now, it would be rain, it would be cloudy, it wouldn't be that fun, especially for me. I used to stream for you under the rains, under the winds, under the snowfalls. Even, even the snowfall is better than the rains, because when the snow falls, you are not getting wet that fast or not getting wet at all because it's like can be a lot of snow but it's the snow which is not immediately turns into the water and uh, not absorb your clothes it just like falling down from you This is a broken brotherhood. The broken brotherhood monument. It's uh, of course dedicated to all those Russian guys who fought for the Russian Soviet Red Army and uh, they were losing their brothers their friends their colleagues how to say let me remind you that 27 million soviet people died during the second world war Глеб, ты там не отвлекайся. По секундчике мне пореши, пожалуйста. Отдыши, отдыши. Давайте. Uh, that memory makes Russia so strong. Yes. 27 million the administration of one of the districts here in the city Sverdlovsky district yes 27 million 27 million residents 27 million like uh, it's a total amount it's uh, as uh, civilians as uh, the soldiers 27 million 
for only four years. It's almost 7 million per, per, per year, per year of war. It's like over a half a million a month. Yes, and now, and now, the Western world, I'm talking about at least the politicians, are trying to make Russians the pariahs. Whoa. The legendary tank T-34, the tank which has changed the move, the movement of the Second World War for the Soviet Union. Lightweight, effective, it has really played a huge role. And that's the eternal flame in every, in every city of Russia, you will find the eternal flame. And they are literally all like the eternal. 24-7, 365. The flames like this never stops, never. You know, I think that, of course, it's like, imagine how many eternal flames are now burning the fire and it costs the money, but it's nothing. It's nothing compared to uh, all those people now commemorated with such an uh, eternal flames made for the victory. So it's worth that, it's worth that. The legendary T-34. Uh, Sophia, thank you for these words, but let me tell you something, here in Russia, no matter what, we really make the difference between the Nazis and the Germans, okay? And even now, when 80 years after the German government again sending hundreds of leopards and other military techniques against Russia. Here we understand that nobody's asking you.
Владимир Ахрамеев, спасибо. Спокойной ночи вам и Наталье. Надеюсь, вы наслаждались Пермью. Yeah, per perm. In Russian language, look, uh, I'm I'm from Ufa. I'm from Ufa. I never told you that. Even though Ufa is like relatively not that far from Perm, people in Ufa are having absolutely different. Well, it's not like absolutely, but significantly, noticeably different pronunciation and the way we pronounce perm and the way we talk we talk different than the locals here in perm and uh, while let's say i'm as originally from ufa i will say perm 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 actually in russian language that's the words of five letters where the last letter is a soft sign It's uh, supposed that the last uh, letter, which is before the soft sign, must sound softly. Perm. Not perm, but perm. And the locals here in perm, they are saying perm, 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 perm. Definitely, definitely, we in Ufa do not pronounce it like that. So, I continue walking the boulevards of the Soviet army. It's almost over, but you see everywhere we saw the monuments dedicated to the heroes of World War II, as to the soldiers, as to the workers of the so-called RIA. Ria. When we talk about Ria, we always means uh, the working people who used to work on the enterprises, the factories, fabrics that used to produce all what was needed for um, the needs of the army. Sergey's language commentaries are very interesting. Uh, yeah, also let me tell you that uh, the people of Perm, they are just speaking different intonations. And uh, just the uh, people on the, in, in the Urals in general, they are speaking different than people, than people in uh, the central Russia. Ufa is almost Urals too, but uh, what's interesting, in Ufa people are not talking like the people in the very Urals. Сейчас посмотрю. Я сам не местный, но у меня есть это. У меня есть, так, как вы сказали, красная? А, ну вот смотрите. Вот смотрите, так. Вот, видите, начался, начался бульвар, вот он идет, бульвар. Вот мы стоим красный, да, видите? Вот получается один перекресток пройти. Вот, видите, пересечение. Так, а потом будет второе пересечение, вот так. Вот она, первая Красноармейская. Это второе пересечение. Вот. Там будет администрация Свердловского района. А, я, я помню, там такое... Вот сейчас идете, там такое здание будет, оно такое как бы треугольное. Там будет написано администрация э, Свердловского района. Вот это... Не вот... Да, нет, но я имею в виду вот это, вот а... это здание. Вот это вот будет, которую улицу вот пересекать будет, вот это первая Красноармейская. Вот. Я, если что, да, спасибо. но вот сейчас вы увидите там. Да, 
So the granny asked me where is the first Red Army Street. She said she's not local. I said I'm also not the local, but I have Yandex Maps and I direction where to go, where to find the first Red Army Street. Yes, the Ural guys are um, pronouncing the words different. It's it's not like that that big difference, but you really you really can hear it. It's like they are, of course, speaking all the same Russian language, all the same words, but the way they pronounce that, it's different. And let's say, uh, and, and, and people in the south of Russia speaking also different than people in the Urals or in the central Russia. You know, the southern, the southern accent, it's like closer to the Ukrainian accent. And they even pronounce the G letter, G, G, as uh, <laughs> Arlenok. Arlenok it's a little eagle, the sport complex. The uh, ice palace. There is also a thick accent, or should I say dialect, of people in the so-called Russian North. Like, you know, like Vologda and uh, Arhangelsk region. This is again the Lurki Park, but we are already walking through this from another side Now, little by little, I'm going to return to the Lenin street. Lenin. Lenin. It's from the biggest city in the Ural region. No, Draghi. The biggest city in the Ural regions is definitely Yekaterinburg. But I think that even Chelyabinsk uh, is uh, larger than Perm. Yes, both Chelyabinsk and Yekaterinburg are 
in top 10 while term is only like a 15th it's a 15th in top cities of russia by population so definitely not Yekaterinburg is the largest in the Urals region. Sofia, yes, there's a there's many differences in Russian dialects. Uh, depends on the region. Sure, sure. That's what I was just talking about for the last like 10 minutes. Mostly like all the people are speaking the same, absolutely the same Russian language, absolutely the same words, but the way they pronounce the words, the way of their intonations and even the speed of uh, speech, speeds, even like uh, in different regions, they are even like uh, speak differently in terms of the speed for example the native moscow residents considered to be the slow speaking guys while people let's say in ufa considered to be one of the um, f like fastest speaking guys and i'm from ufa i consider it that i speak fast when i speak and i consider that i'm speaking just normally but uh, the people, like in Moscow, will tell me that I speak fast. Understandable, yes, but fast. I think in Ufa is one of the uh, clearest Russian pronunciation and in the Far East when I was in Vladivostok somehow even though it's uh, Far East however I consider that the way they are talking in Vladivostok it's like the most clear the most clean they are speaking not too fast not too uh, slow they are not playing too much with intonations they are very clear they are not how to say like uh, transforming the sounds like for example in the south they say uh, uh instead of instead of instead of ge or sha instead of che okay Uh, Sophia, no. In Russia, the dialects are not as uh, thick, not as thick as not to understand what the other guys are like. The guys from the other regions are uh, speaking because it's still the same language, same words, but just different way they pronounce it. But it's still pretty understandable. That is Diaghilev. Ah, no, that's Pushkin. This is Pushkin. Excuse me. Alexander Pushkin. One of our most significant. Ah, так. Пермская кухня, газеты, улица газеты, звезда 75. Понял, понял. Все, Пермская кухня, газеты. Ага. Все, понял. Спасибо. Man. This is gymnasium. The gymnasium names after Diaghilev. One of the most significant ballet impresarios of uh, Russian Empire days. We are now returning to very center, very historic center of Perm. 
since 1720s. Diaghilev. This gymnasium here names after Diaghilev. Here is also the name after uh, names after Alexander Popov. Let me tell you one interesting thing about Herm, which I never mentioned yet, that here live uh, here lived and uh, studied Alexander Popov, who invented the radio. Dvorets Detstva, the Palace of Childhood. Uh, that's uh, the place where the kids m are coming for different sections. Something what they normally do don't have at school, like for example dances, uh, for example the theater section, where they where, where they can perform different drama scenes and stuff like that, drama performances. Uh, robot te robot techniques programming fast reading acting the declaration of rhymes a little pop he follow he's saying in Russian language that he fallen asleep. woke up but stream still keep going yes it's almost 12 o'clock and I started at 8 o'clock I started uh, technically 15 minutes before the sunrise and now you see the sun is it's like almost uh, afternoon you see uh, the people just were going to work in the morning we saw all that morning routine and now it seems like way more quiet and now soon we already will see how people are going for the lunch and i still hadn't my breakfast not a big deal I got lucky with the weather, I think. Just look at it yourself. Yekaterininskaya ulitsa, the Catherine Street. Yes, you know, it's exactly the Catherine back in 1780s gave firm the status of the city. And uh, not just the city, but so-called governor's city. There was two types of the cities in Russian Empire, the governors and like provincial. When you are getting the status of uh, the governor's city, so you are getting a bigger budget for the development than just the provincial city. Better fi financing better financing for the development, better architects, better city planners. Oh, look, Stefan Brunner, you was asking me about salt on that street. I was walking on. When you was asking me about it, I said no salt yet, but here 
I definitely can see the salt block. Wow. This is the salt. Actually, it's not called salt. We call it salt because we don't want to call it like reagente, reag reagents, 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 reagents. I don't know how to say this in English. That's like chemicals. It's it's literally written here хорошее немецкое обувь good German shoes and it's called good you see it good good хорошее немецкое обувь good German shoes reagent okay reagent reagent so that's the reagents okay but yes we call it salt just to make it simple because it looks like salt Wayne Hills, yeah, goodbye best regards to Canada from Russia Nice, smooth jazz, lo-fi sounds here. It's called cult, the cult of breakfasts. Okay, cult zavtrakov. Nice, smooth jazz. Whoa. Okay, here I am. Look how I've made a very huge circle around the city center. I'm returning to the administration of the city of Perm and Theater Square next to the Theater of Opera and Ballet and that monument to Lenin. Sergey, you need a break. Yes, yes. But uh, I'm trying to feel more when I'm on a road trips. You need to understand one thing. When I do the trips like this, I do a lot of efforts. I do the flight. Okay, I was flying for 1500 kilometers here today 
And so once I did that, well, I need I need to give more time. I need to give more time for this. Because it's going to take a long time before I will come back here again. Yes, it's completely sunny now. Whoa! Sometimes still can meet a really old tramps. What is your record streaming, Katusha? It was uh, about 14 hours, about two years ago when I was streaming during the white night in St. Petersburg. I started like at uh, 5 o'clock, 5, 5 p.m. and finished at about 7 o'clock in the morning. The house of Demidovs. Okay, look, probably the Demidovs used to live here in the days. The family of Demidovs back in 18th century was one of the richest families in Russian Empire. They were mostly the industrialists. They were into the metallurgical business. Yes, the famous dynasty of Demidovs. Again, we are walking next to the Church of the Nativity of the Mother of God. When I started the live stream, it was minus three degrees Celsius. I'm sure it's now warmed up a little bit. I feel like it's warmed up. <laughs> okay, it's still minus two degrees Celsius. It's warmed up only for uh, one degree, but it seems like the sun, that what makes the difference in its feeling. So it's only it's only one degree higher, but feels like way um, way warmer. Probably because of the sun. Sergey, you need a pit stop or WC. Here, Elisa, I did my parts. Well, I'm about to stop the whole live stream because it's 12 o'clock. I now exactly will have time for the lunch and to settle down in the hotel. There already will be okay for me to check in because check-in time in all Russian hotels is 2 p.m. Okay? So now I have time for lunch and then we'll have time to check in.
the corner of Lenin Street and Komsomol Avenue. That's where I'm gonna finish today's morning live stream. Never forget that I will come back to you on Friday night. I'm still staying here in Perm and I will come back to you. I will come back to you in the evening. Another wonderful live stream, Sergey. Have fun, fun and educational. Thank you. You're welcome. No, I'm not super hungry. It's okay. So, no worries. No worries, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, dudes, dudettes, all the lovers of uh, the Russian live streams and uh, Russian history and uh, Russian stuff. Thank you all for watching this, mo this morning. See you in the evening. Now I gotta go uh, for lunch. We'll check in the hotel and after some sleep, we'll come back to you on Friday night. Perm. Russia on Friday nights is waiting for you. My name is Sergey Baklikov. This is Baklikov Live from the Urals, from Perm, from Russia, with love and peace. Traditional panorama in the end. Oh, the sun is shining so bright. Ah, uh, thank you, Dot. Yeah, the guy whose nickname is just Dots. Thank you very much. Thank you for all of your super chats, your appreciation. Special thanks to the members of the channel. This is uh, how all the Russian road trips are possible. See you later today.